Hello everyone. Welcome to another Cambridge IGCSE Chemistry Paper 6 Alternative to Practical May June 2020 0620 Paper 62 Question Paper 6 Solving Video Question number 1. Hot copper to oxide reacts with hydrogen. The products are copper and steam. The apparatus used to react copper to oxide with hydrogen is shown. Hydrogen being passed through copper to oxide and then there is a u-tube where the vapors are passing and then unreacted hydrogen is coming out from this particular end draw an arrow on the diagram to show where the apparatus should be heated so the apparatus should be heated in the point where we have the copper to oxide so the arrow will be at the uh, adjust below copper to oxide during the reaction the color of the copper to oxide changes state the color change Copper to oxide is a black solid and then once it actually reacts with hydrogen, it produces copper plus water. So the copper has a brown color. So it will be black to brown. Part C. Identify the colorless liquid collected. The colorless liquid collected at this particular portion is water. Explain why the U-tube is in ice. The U-tube is in ice so that the steam that is produced from the reaction of copper to oxide with hydrogen, it can be cooled down. E1. Large amount of unreacted hydrogen should not be allowed to escape into the laboratory. State why. Hydrogen is a very flammable gas, so it can explode. Part 2. Complete the diagram to show how the unreacted hydrogen could be collected and its volume measured. Label any apparatus that you draw. So the unreacted gas can be collected uh, through a collection over water in a graduated measuring cylinder. So we're going to use a water trough. The water trough is going to hold water. And in a me graduated measuring cylinder, inverted graduated measuring cylinder, we can collect the unreacted hydrogen as bubbles. The, gradu uh, the measuring cylinder should be graduated. So we're going to give four markings and then a, a larger marking. Four markings and then a larger marking. Question number two. A student investigated the temperature change when magnesium reabon reacts with dilute sulfuric acid. Five experiments were done. Experiment number one. Using a measuring cylinder, 20 cm cube of dilute sulfuric acid were poured into a boiling tube. A thermometer was used to measure the initial temperature of the acid. 1 cm length of magnesium ribbon was added to the acid in the boiling tube. The acid and the magnesium ribbon in the boiling tube was tired continuously using a thermometer. The highest temperature reached by the mixture was measured. The boiling tube was rinsed out with distilled water. Experiment number two. The experiment was, was repeated with the 2 cm length of magnesium ribbon instead of the 1 cm length. Experiment number three was repeated. The same experiment was repeated with 3 cm length of magnesium ribbon, then 5 cm length, and then 6 cm length of magnesium ribbon. Using the information in the description of experiment and the thermometer diagrams to complete the table. So the length of magnesium ribbon, so there were 1, 2, 3, 5 and 6. Initial temperature. When reading initial temperature, we must read in this direction. So that's 23. Final temperature, 24. Temperature increase, 1 degree Celsius. So in that way, we must fulfill the rest of the information. All the initial temperatures were 23 degrees Celsius. 
the final temperature in the second experiment was 26 so temperature change 3 degrees Celsius 29 temperature change 6 degrees Celsius 36 temperature change was 13 degrees Celsius and then 40 temperature change was 17 degrees Celsius in which experiment 1 2 3 4 5 or 5 was the temperature increase the largest so we can see the maximum amount of temperature change occurs in experiment 5 part C add a suitable scale to the y-axis and plot the results from the experiment 1 to 5 on the grid draw a smooth line graph making sure that your line passes through 0 0 length of magnesium ribbon slash centimeter temperature increase slash degree Celsius so the temperatures uh, increase slash degree Celsius we can see the maximum temperature rise is 17 and a minimum temperature increase is 1 so we can each block we can measure like 5 and then here will be 10, 15, and then 20. Explain why the graph line must be passed through 0, 0. All right. So basically, if any magnesium, if zero amount of magnesium is reacted, then there is no reaction. All right. So there is no reaction with no magnesium. From your graph, deduce the temperature increase if experiment 1 is repeated using a 4 cm length of magnesium ribbon. Show clearly on the grid how you worked out your answer. For the graph portion, for 1 cm length, we had increase in temperature by 1 degree Celsius. So 1, all right. For 2 cm, there was a 3 degree Celsius. For 3 cm, there were 6. For 5, there were 13. For 6, there were 17. So for 4 centimeter, the temperature change was 6, 7, 8, 8.5, 8.75, 8.75 degrees Celsius. Part F1. Why would carrying out the experiment in polystyrene cup rather than a boiling tube improve the accuracy of the result? So basically polystyrene cup is a better insulator. So it will prevent heat loss uh, from to the surrounding. F2. Sketch on the grid the graph you would expect if the experiment was repeated using a polystyrene cup instead of a boiling tube. So instead of a boiling tube, if we were to use a polystyrene cup, we would see this particular uh, temperature change would be a little bit higher. So all we have to do is we would have to draw a graph that starts from the origin but finishes at a little bit higher temperature. Part G, the volume of dilute sulfuric acid could be measured uh, with a 20 cmq pipette. State one advantage of using pipette rather than a measuring cylinder. A pipette is more accurate. Part two, state one disadvantage of using pipette rather than a measuring cylinder. Pipette, using a pipette is much slower than a measuring cylinder. Question number three, two solids, solid L and solid M were analyzed. Solid L was chromium three chloride. Tests were done on each solid. Test on solid L, complete the expected observation. Solid L was dissolved in distilled water to produce solution L. Solution L was divided into four portions in three test tubes and a boiling tube. To the first portion of solution L in the boiling tube, 
about 1 cm depth of dilute hydrochloric acid was added, the boiling tube was warmed gently. A strip of filter paper was dipped into acidified potassium permanganate and held at the mouth of the boiling tube. So adding an acid such as hydrochloric acid and followed by testing with a acidified potassium permanganate solution is a test for sulfite SO32 minus ion presence of sulfite all right since we are testing chromium 3 chloride so there will be no observation so we'll say no change B to the second portion of solution L aqua sodium hydroxide was added slowly until it was in excess and no further change were seen observations so basically when we are going to get add the sodium hydroxide in the beginning we're going to see a gray green precipitate after that we're going to see a green precipitate after that when we're going to add excess sodium hydroxide the precipitate will dissolve Part C. To the third portion of solution L, aqueous ammonia was added slowly until it was in excess and no further change were seen. Aqueous ammonia would give gray-green precipitate. However, in aqueous ammonia, chromium-3 uh, precipitate, you know, is not going to uh, dissolve. Part D. To the fourth portion of solution L, 1 cm depth of nitric acid and followed by a 1 cm depth of aqua silver nitrate is added. Nitric acid followed by silver nitrate is a test for halide. Since in this experiment we already have a chloride present, so we are going to get white precipitate. Test on solid M. Tests were done and the following observations were made. Test on solid M. Test 1. Flame test. Yellow flame is seen. Yellow flame is an indication of sodium ion. About 10 cm cube of dilute nitric acid was added to solid M. Any gas produced was tested. Effervescence, lime water turned milky. Addition of acid and then if there is an effervescence, it usually indicates that the solid contains a carbonate ion. And then testing. Uh, you know the lime water when it turns milky which confirms carbon dioxide so adding the acid produces the carbon dioxide and then the test for carbon dioxide is proved by the lime water test about 1 cm depth of aqueous barium nitrate was added to the solution followed by adding dilunitric acid to solid M in test 2 there was no change so uh, nitric acid and barium nitrate added together is a test for sulfate so we can definitely say no sulfate present identify solid m so solid m we can confirm that it has sodium and it has carbonate so it's sodium carbonate many window cleaning products contain aqueous ammonia aqueous ammonia is an alkali that reacts with dilute acid Plan an investigation to find out of two window cleaning products contain the most concentrated aqueous ammonia. Include in your plan the method you will use, how your results will be used to determine which window cleaning product contains the most concentrated aqueous ammonia. You are provided with an aqueous solution of two window cleaning products, dilute hydrochloric acid of a known concentration and common laboratory apparatus. So basically to do an experiment like this, we can take equal volume of each of the cleaner. For example, like 25 cm cube of each of the cleaner. And the volume was measured with a pivot. The methyl orange indicator was then added to the uh, cleaner. Then it was titrated with hydrochloric acid from a burette until all the indicator changed color. The volume of the acid was recorded and the concentrated cleaner used more acid to neutralize. Guys, thank you for joining the video today. If you like videos like this, please subscribe to the channel, like the video, share it with your friends and stay with us and comment, you know, 
and let us know which question paper that you want us to solve next.